So cooling is one of those things that needed to get sorted for every project car. For this particular car, the coolant pump was already sourced. So for me, the objective today is to get cooling lines run to all the right places, make all the right connections, get everything sealed up. If you are new to electric vehicle builds, yes, even electric vehicles need cooling systems. So running nonstop or charging very quickly can really generate a lot of heat for the batteries. And especially for the lithium batteries, it's very important to keep them at an optimal range. Even electric motors generate heat, so they are extremely efficient, like 90, 97% efficient, but they still generate heat and that heat needs to be dealt with. Follow along as we complete the cooling circuit for this custom electric vehicle build. For today's sponsor, we have Gentle Bands. Good game, well played. So it even comes with a certificate of craftsmanship. Holy cow, check that out. Yeah, that looks so good. All those little facets, kind of a nice color, and it's kind of got some of these cool gems that are inlaid. So I know what you're thinking. You work on cars a lot. Having a ring may not be the best option, but Gentle Bands has you covered there too. They even developed the chain with customers in mind. Chain offers allowing people to keep this meaningful ring close to them at all times. They came up with a slogan, grit never clocks out. So let's say that uh, you're worried about getting it roughed up a little bit. You can always just tuck it away when needed. See, I told you they got you covered. So you can wear it, pretend that you're Frodo Baggins, or just be one of those really cool guys. So I chose tungsten, which is dense and sturdy, a real manly material. So if you're a modern guy, love some jewelry, Gentle Bands has you covered. So if you guys really are interested in helping support the channel, please go visit Gentle Bands. I've got a special coupon code, electric supercar, that will get you 25% off. I'll leave a link in the video description below, but please go visit them. It shows that their partnership is well-placed with this channel. I'm just gonna add some of this gasket maker, uh, make sure we don't get any leaks between the cooling plate and the controller. Okay, it's all made up, clean up. Gasket material, you're supposed to kind of just compress a little bit and then let it set and then you can compress it more. Something broke. Was it just my finger? No. I broke the gasket, God. Yeah, so again, this is a low pressure system. I just figured my thumb would not be able to hold that much pressure. I just wanted to make sure I didn't have any leaks and I blew out the whole gasket. So I have to redo the gasket. Let's see what it looks like. Oh yeah. We'll uh, clean this off and uh, get another one going. So I guess that makes sense. Even if my thumb was only able to hold like five PSI, there's probably like, 10 square inches or something. So that, that'd that be like 50 pounds of force trying to pull it apart. So uh, yeah, anyway, we'll clean this up and uh, get a new gasket going. The internet says oven cleaner gets this off pretty good. That looks pretty good. Okay, we'll try it just one at a time here. I think we're good. All right, try number two. I find sometimes if I heat it up, it makes it just a little easier to go on, a little softer. Perfect. And there we have it. Yeah, 
I need to get some soft jaws, but for now, that'll work. Let's see if that's good enough or if we need to retape it. Yeah, that's better. No bubbles. Yep. Okay. Got them both. Here is the rear battery box and down here is where we've got the cooling ports. So I'm not sure what's going on, but like this whole bottom plate, it's like almost wrapped in plastic. So anyway, I don't know quite how to describe it, but uh, it's like not metal. But anyway, this is where the ports are. We've got a seal against this. I'm gonna take those ports and do the same thing where we just make a gasket around this and cinch it up. All right, we're gonna go ahead and put these on. One thing you might be asking as you're looking at this, this is kind of a bigger opening and we've kind of narrowed it down to a smaller opening. There's a couple reasons for that. Number one, the front battery box is limited. It's got a opening that's similar to this. The other thing is the motor controller. It, we actually had to go to this as well, meaning it was a very small size. For this particular car, the batteries that it's using and the power that's gonna draw, it actually will not likely even need cooling for the batteries. So we are adding a cooling option, but it will likely not be needed. Here in the front of the car, you can see just right through to the floor. What I'd like to do is I want to mount the pump kind of at the lowest part. And then I also, I'm going to do this kind of for two purposes. The other thing is I really don't like the idea of road debris or other things, even water being able to kind of come up and splash on the high voltage connectors or rocks coming and hitting things. So I'm going to make a little tray or a shelf. It kind of goes from the bottom. There's a frame, piece of the frame there up kind of to the bumper. And that will give me a place to mount the pump for the coolant at the lowest spot and also kind of protect from road debris and things. So I'm just going to use some cardboard and make a little template and measure it out, make a design. I told myself I wasn't gonna do this anymore. So I'm gonna put the cardboard away and get the 3D scanner out and design something that way. All right, look what we got from Send, Cut, Send. This is the plate that will go kind of underneath the front part, and it's where we can mount our pump. So we're gonna get these out and get them on the car. Here we are in the engine bay, and I ordered a piece from Send, Cut, Send. It is down there. And the thought is, is that this way, uh, some of the electrical components are protected, and I also wanted a place to mount the pump and some of the plumbing things like these T's. So we're gonna go ahead and put uh, this bracket on this piece as well. This is the one that holds the special, I'll we'll call it thermal relay that triggers the fan. So we're gonna go ahead and put it, I think like right about here.
this is just a quick shot of what I'm going to be putting in. So here's the pump, the return side. This is the side that's going out to the rest of the car. So this one right here is coming from the radiator. This is actually going to go from the overflow tank. The system's low, obviously you get fed into there. This side is going to the positive side. So we've got batteries as well as the motor controller. So that's what's going to be coming off of there. And that'll be all the smaller lines. Again, the bottom of the radiator is going through to this one. So we're going to go ahead and put the blue tubing on here in a couple places. And then we'll uh, cut to length once it's in the car. I have the rest of the lines on. So I'm now gonna try to put this panel in place. It might be a little challenging with all the tubes and things fighting me, but hopefully we can get this in, bolted down, and then run all these to where they need to go, trim them, we'll be getting close. So the next little bit is going to be in here. So uh, you'll probably just see the back of my head for a little bit. We'll skim through it. So right here, we've got this one coming from the motor controller. We've got these ones that are gonna be coming from the battery packs. And then this one's going to the top of the radiator. I'm gonna need a 90 degree fitting on the bottom of that one. It just bends too abruptly and kinks the tube. This is the top cover for the front battery box. It's got holes and things to be fastened. So these are actually holes for cooling lines. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna notch these out so if you wanna take the top off, you don't have to take the cooling lines out.
All right, I've got adjustable flow right there. That's gonna be going to the battery packs. There's a very good chance that the battery packs won't need any and essentially the motor controller is gonna need a lot. That'll allow us to adjust the flow as necessary. All right, I think we've got the cooling lines pretty much all done. Basically, there are eight lines. We've got essentially two for the front battery box, supply and return, two for the rear battery box, a supply and return, two for the motor controller, supply and return, and then two for the overflow tank. So those are the eight. Then we've got it going from essentially the return into the radiator. The radiator goes down to the pump. The pump goes over to essentially another distribution block and they all kind of flow out. All right, so we got a lot done. We got all the cooling sorted. Next is wiring. You probably saw along the way there were some stray wires. We've got wiring that's already underway. So stay tuned. See you next time. For this particular car, the cooling pump was already... As we complete the... What do we call it? Cleanser? I don't think I'm going to do those sorts of intros anymore. None of the big channels have